What's up, everyone? Welcome to The Yogi Show. My name is Pedro Luna. I am the co-host here on the show along with Yogi Brian. Today's episode is sponsored by Ajna Wellbeing. They are an absolutely amazing company that creates super high-quality yoga, meditation, acupressure products, and more. I fell in love with Ajna Wellbeing way before they sponsored the show. It was a year and a half ago when I purchased their acupressure mat off of Amazon to help relieve some tension I had in my shoulder and my neck. It's been a game changer for me, and I'm obsessed with their meditation cushion, and I've been using it daily since the beginning of 2020. Check out their amazing line of products at amazon.com slash Ajna, and use code YOGISHOW15 for 15% off your purchase. That's amazon.com slash Ajna, which is A-J-N-A, and use promo code YOGISHOW15 for a 15% discount. So check it out, my friends. On today's show, we have a super inspiring chat and on tap for you with Sadie Nardini. She's an amazing and inspiring yoga teacher and creator of Core Strength Vinyasa Yoga and the Yoga Shred. She's inspired millions, millions, leading classes, trainings, and workshops around the globe on YouTube and on her online classes. Sadie's the real deal. She is here to share her inspiring story and get you on the mat and out of your own way. Get ready to hashtag lighten up, my friends. Enjoy the ride. All right. Welcome to the show, Sadie Nardini. Take two. Let's make it happen this time, right? Boom. <laughs> you know, sometimes the technology just doesn't work as like how you want it. But Sadie, thank you for being on the show today. Thank you for coming here and being with us. We really appreciate you so much. Of course. I'm I'm honored. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been a journey to you know, like we were talking about the first time when we tried to record this, is that sometimes it just doesn't work out the way you think it's going to work out, and that's kind of like life. It just doesn't happen that way. But when you do something for the right reasons, the universe will conspire to help you when you're on your path. Yes. And then here we are. So. Great. And Sadie, that okay. I thought Sean Corn's hair was like the most unmistakable hair in the yoga business. I think that's a fraud. I, that mohawk is so that on point. Is I love on point. it. Right, that is. I'll, I'll be second to Sean. How about that? Second. Okay, one <laughs> A and one B. Very good. One A. The and best mohawk in the yoga industry. Let's put it that way. The most, the best, and most unmistakable. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I remember, Sadie. I remember seeing um, your online videos. I was watching. It was like I swear, like a, a random infomercial came on my tv and you were doing like yoga like yoga pump or like core fit. like you were doing something like core strength vinyasa and i was like look at that hair and then here we are this is like a couple years ago and here we are oh, oh my gosh yeah i've always liked to fuse some stuff together i like to throw it in i must have been a witch in a previous lifetime <laughs> throw it in the pot and stir it up and see what see what you know magic occurs <laughs> That's so good. That's so funny. Brian, what's up, man? How you doing out there? You good? How is it going, everybody? Sadie, thank you so much for coming on the show. And yeah, hair game on point. Just yeah, on point. Thanks. On point. All the, all the I time. I wake up exactly like this. <laughs> yeah. I, didn't have to do anything, sure. I know when Sadie got on video, we're like, I, I was like looking at what I was wearing. I'm like, oh shit, I need to go change or something. <laughs> yeah. I don't know so, if the if the cat <laughs> vomiting rainbows can fully <laughs> stack up to the Ronnie James Dio. Oh, oh. Yeah. I like it. That's it, amazing. It's, it's a, it's a close second, if not first. Yes. Mm. Yes. <laughs> one A and one B. <laughs> Sadie, you have been in the yoga industry for a long time and I know you have so much value to give people. And that's what we always talk about in the show is like, how can we just offer value to people as a yoga teacher? That's, all I ever want to do is just share the gift of yoga with the world. That's kind of the premise for the podcast is just to like bring more awareness about yoga, mindfulness, and gratitude with the touch of humor to whoever wants to listen. And, uh, you know, we love to talk about like a little backstory first. Like how did you, how'd you find yoga like back in the day? And like, obviously it's evolved a lot since then, but like can you give us a little bit of backstory because it's super inspiring. People need to know if they don't already know. Yeah, I think, I think a lot of people look at me today and just think, oh, you know, she's traveling the world doing the stuff. She can do a handstand, you know, um, and, and then I also teach for all populations, chair yoga and empath yoga and, and whatever the deal is, I want to help you transform yourself from where you 
are into more of who you deserve to be and are, are born to be, however that is with some of our limitations. But I think people are like, well, how can you teach me that you're just, you know, a, a rock and roll, like go, go, go kind of girl. Well, they might not know this, but I have a lot of limitations. Um, when I was 13, a grown man cannonballed on my head in a swimming pool in the Midwest oh. and broke my neck. Oh my gosh. I was partially paralyzed for two years. Nobody knew what was going on because I couldn't remember the accident. So all two weeks after this happened, after they kind of drugged me out of the pool because I passed out, uh, got me home. I didn't know what happened. I, I thought I slipped and fell in the pool or something. And after two weeks, I had to go to the hospital, but my body had immobilized itself. Oh, oh shit. shit. My whole central nervous system melted. I, I don't know. So I went in to the doctor and they took all these tests and thought I had spinal meningitis, but because that's what the symptoms were telling them, I didn't know enough to say, take an x-ray of my spine. I didn't, I forgot the accident happened. I blacked it out. Um, so they couldn't find spinal meningitis, but that's what they told me had probably happened uh, that since I waited so long to go in, they couldn't really find a trace of it, but now I was really damaged and here's some steroids and go back home and hope for the best. But they privately told my mom to get me a wheelchair and I might not ever walk again. And they didn't know. I was just, I was unable to do anything but really crawl kind of like this in the trenches, not even hands and knees. That was too much for me. Um, Shit. So yeah, it was a huge, wow. horrible ordeal. Um, couldn't breathe. My breathing diaphragm was all messed up, panic attacks all day long and migraines, you know, all this for years. I, um, I remember being 15 and just looking out the window at life going by and thinking, I'm going to try this weird yoga thing that my yeah. mom said might help me off a dusty old book on the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Hittleman's 28 day yoga plan. There's just horrible fashion on the cover. Like, <laughs> Short shorts. I bet. This might be why I like unitard for this day, but it's less colored <laughs> unitard, like tights. And then anyway, but I, um, I couldn't do anything like we know today. Low lunge warriors were out of the question. Um, hands and knees out of the question. So I would, she'd stick me in poses and I'd be in these restoratives like goddess with a couple of bolsters or legs up the wall for like an hour at a time. And I think that it helped to keep my spine in great alignment while I healed myself because I never had any brace. I never had anything to stabilize me. My body stabilized itself and then the yoga and through the yoga. I mean, a lot of those poses were, I, I cringe now as an anatomy expert, I cringe looking back at the book in some of the ways, but in other ways, it was breath. Mm -hmm. It was meditation techniques. It was restoratives. And those that's how I had to practice for years. And it took me a decade to be able to walk into a yoga class walking. And I looked around, I saw this beautiful woman. She was the teacher as it turns out. I'd never even seen yoga outside of that book. I'd only done it at my house. Um, and I asked her, how, how, how are you that strong just doing yoga? Mm. Because to me, yoga was therapeutic and restorative. Mm. I didn't understand why she was all buff doing yoga. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hand standing everywhere. <laughs> yeah. And it turns out she was a very early uh, Ashtanga teacher. So I went into her class, barely able to do anything strengthening at all. The first, I don't know why the first pose, it must have been a hybrid because the first pose was chair. Oh, yeah. Oh gosh. Welcome to welcome yeah, to yoga. Welcome. <laughs> and I did it for like two seconds, no joke. And I had to I had to I didn't know what to do because I did not understand how classes work. So I'm on a mat in the front to see oh, better, thinking we're just gonna take a nap, you know, and um <laughs> shaking and flipping out and I didn't know what to do and I was so embarrassed because everyone else was just no problem. And here I am like shaking and I had to just stand up and then I took a lap. I walked off the mat and walked all around the room and I was asking people by this time they're in dog pose or something. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, is this, is this hard for you? I mean, is this yoga's like, and she's like, Sadie, Sadie, and she's come back to the mat and here's child's pose. Please do this whenever you need it. 
Yeah. And um, three years later, she asked me to teach her classes when she moved to India. Whoa. So I got I got indoctrinated the old school way where you study with a teacher for a long time. And yeah. through that oral tradition, you then begin teaching. And uh, there weren't any yoga teacher training programs no. back then. No, no was, YTT. No, no YTTs. Maybe Jiva Mukti in New York, but I was in Seattle. Uh, yeah. You know, that's how it was done back in the in the day. So. Then Yoga Alliance came along later. It was like, where's your 200 hour? <laughs> and I'm like, man, I studied three years. Okay, let's, uh, but anyway. Yeah, actually, yeah. It out. And that's the difference is like, we were talking to someone before about that. I don't remember who it was, which guest. And they were like, you don't need to, like the YTT. Like I didn't have a YTT. You know, I think it was Brian Kest. And he was saying like, I just learned how to teach the poses. And then I just taught the poses, you know? Not for the same. I mean, we're back all back in the day. I mean, I don't yeah. think they were asking Patabi Joyce for his 200 hour certificate. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not sure that they were. I don't think so. But at some point it does, you know, I understand it's an organization and they have to somehow find out that you know how to do something, I guess, yeah. but a piece of paper doesn't make a good teacher. No, no, necessarily, you know? no, not necessarily, you know, and I always think about that too, like the best, and it's always like, you, you want to go to the yoga studio and it's like the person that's doing all the poses, like, oh, you should be a teacher. Like, is it just because they can do all the poses? They should be the teacher. Like right. maybe they just like to do all the poses. Like, you know, yeah. it doesn't mean they're going to be a good teacher. You know, maybe there are, but it doesn't necessarily, it doesn't translate like that. You know, it does not. Right. Translate like, that. Yeah. A true teacher. It, it's, you know, as well as I do, it takes, it takes a lot of different and varied skills and a drive to really help people. Um, to learn so much about all these different bodies and spend time with them to the point where you can see a path for them, but know that it's not your path to walk on with them, or even that they, they may or may not choose the path that you think is the best for them. And you have to let go to allow someone, you know, so we're really just good advice givers. Honestly, we're <laughs> like, well, I could see this, we but you know, we're not the healers. I don't think they're, they heal themselves through exactly. their Exactly. I love we're that. We're guides. Yeah. We guide, you know, and, and some of us are, are rock star guides and some of us are dental guides and all of that. But I think that that's what we truly are here to do. So when I see people say, oh, I'm a healer, I think mm, maybe you're a healing conduit. Yeah. But you, unless you're magic, which maybe you are, and you can just like, <laughs> <laughs> Tumor beyond. <laughs> yeah. Tumor beyond. Uh, you know, we're a, we're a healing advisor. Yeah, yeah. healing and advisor. I, yeah, my my teacher, like when I was, you know, working on my training, she's like, yeah, you're just almost like a mirror. Like you're just holding space for these students, and if they want to give you a lot of credit, you know, because as a yoga teacher, like people like to give you a lot of credit. Like, oh, you're you healed me, and you did all this to me. It's like, no, I'm just telling you poses and like giving you options like yeah you're doing all that work you came in here you did all the work yeah, yeah. we're space holders that's that's yes. so wonderful when you go into a class and the teacher has wrapped the class in their energy and you know you're safe to explore yes. yourself and go into what i feel is a sensitivity practice i think yoga is really sensitivity training self-sensitivity you know yes. and owning your own path and process in the midst of a bunch of other people around you, which is just life. Yeah. And that is uh, teachers who allow us to do that are really powerful. Teachers who say this is the only way and do this and and here's how the pose is and hit you with a cane if you're not doing it right. <laughs> Shit. right. And, they're, that. and they're commenting negatively on my memes. Those teachers <laughs> yeah. are telling me that it's anti-yoga. Yeah. Karen Carl yeah. out there. Well, well, yoga was always anti itself and there's a million different contradictory uh, philosophies right. within yoga. So yeah, it's always, it's been a big bitch fest from the beginning, but <laughs> <laughs> everyone was telling Krishnamacharya when he was making up poses from the English wrestlers and, and giving them to the young boys and saying, stay here and learn your Hindu philosophy and, and do these this sun salutation, you know, Chaturanga was not carved on a rock 5,000 years ago. Everyone was like, that's blasphemy. You can't teach yoga physically. Look at all the emphasis you're putting on the body. You can't make up poses that aren't for meditation. And they, and they just thought he was horrible. He wasn't yoga. People told right. Krishnamacharya he wasn't a yogi. So, oh, here we are today still getting the same stuff 
I don't know if I can swear on this podcast. No, you can. Go ahead. You can. You can. Go ahead. ahead. Let let it loose. Okay, well, I'll I'll come back to a swear word later. (laughs) Yeah, right. You can't just like say a swear word after it's like, oh, yeah, you can swear. It's like, fuck. Yeah. Yeah, Get out of the way. You can't. Yeah, you got to smoothly get into it. Exactly what I was going to say. (laughs) You know, and and so our question is, do you want to innovate or do you want to care what people think? Mm -hmm. Because if you're an innovator, uh, even if you're a classical teacher, you still have to innovate. You've got to bring in fresh things. Otherwise, you're just the same teacher that you had. And, and why not go to them? You know, what, yes. what do you hear? Right. you're even innovating when you take exactly the same practice in the same order and bring your own opinions to it. You are. Okay. So you're always going to hear people not like it and love it and everything in between. And you just have to decide it, what you're doing it for, yeah. you know, to please as many of the people as possible, which you will never do, or to be yourself fully in this world, in this lifetime and rock who you are. If that is what's most satisfying to you, as I would think it would be, then you gotta be you. And yeah. the, the lovers will love and the haters will hate. And yes. It, they'll lovers be that way whether you're love. yourself or not. So why yeah. not? Yeah, no, and the lovers will love and haters will hate. That's so good. That's so good and so true. Cause they're they're gonna keep doing they're just gonna keep doing that. But it's so you know what's so interesting, Sadie? Is when the haters that hate they keep showing up. <laughs> like, why do they keep coming? <laughs> <laughs> because it's easier to hate on somebody else doing their shit yeah. than doing your own. Yeah, seriously. This is very scary. Yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> it is. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Natural swear word coming at you. But that's so true. Like, yeah, if you're gonna be bold, if you're gonna be you, like, yeah, you're gonna get you're gonna get people that love you and then people that hate you. Like, that's just gonna happen. It's normal. I was I was on a podcast last week and it just came out today and like they were asking me like my my page like hit like fifty thousand followers like a month ago like. And it's just slowly growing or whatever. And they asked, like, they're like, as the page is getting bigger, like, how is it? And it's like, well, it's, it's tough to balance like my time on there, but it's actually gets easier. Like for me, like it gets easier because like, I really just don't even respond to haters anymore. Like I just don't even like acknowledge it. Like for the most part, it's just like, okay, like I could either, especially in the yoga community, I can comment back and it's just going to snowball. (laughs) <laughs> or I can just focus on the people that like love this stuff. You know, those are my people. Yeah. I tell, I tell people that too, whether you're online or I hear from a lot of, let's say yoga studio owners who open like a, uh, you know, a cool vinyasa flow kind of thing with their own music. They opened a studio and then right, you know, a mile away is another studio who has been there for a while. Maybe they're dry and classical. This is, this is kind of, what gets everybody going, right? You've got somebody in town who's doing yoga their way. And then you've got somebody else who's doing yoga their way that comes in. Their students usually don't want to cross. So there's really not any competition. And even if there is, a student can go to more than one teacher because we don't own students like a dog. (laughs) They're not our property. Um, So yeah, if you want to go to my class today and Sheila's class on Thursday, go do that. But I hear this studio owner will say stuff about this studio owner and try to diminish them in the community and go online and say, oh, well, did you know she's doing this and just block students from going and try to try to do all this. It's, yeah. it's, there's so much drama in the yoga world online. Yeah. And, yeah. and my, my counsel to them, just exactly what you said, is to ignore the haters because you're not gonna teach them, you're not going to change their minds, everything you say will be strangely more fuel Mm, for their fire. Mm -hmm. You can't come from a nice enough, good enough place to make, they just want, they'll take everything and turn it and shoot it right back at you. Um, But you can focus on your goals and your dreams, being who you are, focus on the people that love and resonate with you and your tribe will will grow. Yeah. And the other, uh, people can go over in the corner I call them the beef jerky people because they look all like <laughs> all sucked into themselves. I love that. That's and so good. That. I can see like, the person in my class right now. I see beef yeah. jerky. I see him. Yeah. Or, That's or amazing. whatever. Banana jerky, you know. <laughs> if you're vegan. I don't want to offend people, but. <laughs> if you're vegan. It's fine. If you're, if you're vegan. Fine. <laughs> um, oh, my but God. But, yeah. So, it, that's what I've had to do for a lifetime because you can imagine 
coming coming online mm -hmm. in a space where there wasn't a lot of yoga back when I started. Gosh, uh, wow. And all people really knew about yoga was like, namaste, thank you. And everyone's in beige and everyone's like, mm, here, a bowl of goji berries. I'm like, let's drink <laughs> some wine together. Do like kiss of fire. Yeah. And, and um, Mohawks. Mohawks. And they didn't know what to do. Yeah. They didn't know what yeah. to do. So I got a lot of lovers and a lot of, mm, I got a lot of people who loved it. And I got a small but vocal minority of people who love to tell me what they think oh, of yeah. my stuff. And I, and I, if I comment at all, I mean, it's mostly in my mind, but I just say, dude, if you spent two minutes writing this, you could have spent two minutes on your own dreams instead. Yes. Oh, and that would have gotten man. you a lot farther. Like, why are you spending time on the internet? Yeah, telling really? you think of my fucking makeup. Like it's, <laughs> Not your business, first of all. <laughs> first of all, it has first nothing all, to do with you. in the world, so I'll put on whatever color of lipstick I want. Yeah, you do you, Sadie. I love that. <laughs> you know, and that it goes, it goes to that point I think about is like, you know, when we talk about the major part of the uh, audience is aspiring yoga teachers and new yoga teachers, and you kind of hit on a little bit, like, you know, you have to do you, you know, and how do you think like these days, like, because there's yoga market so saturated. I mean, just like you were saying, like one mile away is other studios, this and that. Like, how do you think one, because obviously you've grown a personal brand. How can one that's starting to teach, like make their way into like doing that personal brand in the yoga biz? Like what, do you, what kind of advice would you have for them these days? Well, I think um, just remember when you think of yourself, it's easy to think that you don't have anything special to offer because um, everyone's so close to their own skin. You know, we've lived with ourselves in our own bodies for a lifetime and maybe we're a little bored with ourselves or we don't see how specific we are or how unique we are. And you don't have to have a mohawk and, and do the whole <laughs> thing. Um, that this is me just being me. I mean, I, I, this is what I wore all day. Yeah. Not just, to not just for the show. <laughs> no. no, sorry guys. But, um, I didn't touch it up. I mean, <laughs> lighting um, and makeup over here. Yeah. And I, I would just say, if you can't see your uniqueness, ask yourself a couple of questions. And what I would ask is, uh, what do I feel driven to express to other people? What do I feel like I was born and put on this earth through my challenges and my joys and my transcending things and being victorious in my own life? And the things that scare me and the, and the places that I've kind of walked through those fires. Because of that, what do I feel I'm here uniquely from my experience to talk about and offer to the world? And then secondly, how do I want to spend my time around whom? Mm -hmm. Because if, if you love helping people and being that healing guide, you can choose kind of what angle your message has. Let's say that you are a trauma survivor and I call them trauma thrivers. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Uh, because I'm also one and, and I would, I, yes, we survive, but let's thrive also. Thriver. Yes. That's but do cool. I want to teach yoga for, for um, physical violence thrivers, survivors right. and thrivers? Right. I could. And sometimes I might do a course for that or teach a workshop about that. But do I want to make that my life's work and spend time around it all of the time when I am working through my own process about it? Maybe, maybe not. Mm -hmm. So what is the angle of your uniqueness? Who do you want to, how, how can you envision being passionate and being full and fulfilled each day? Teaching what population, teaching what message, what's the soundtrack, what's the environment, you know, what kind of thing, studio, bar, you know, right. who are you? And um, because we don't only want to think as new teachers or people trying to find more ways to express their authenticity, just about what's going to attract more clients to us. We, you need to ask yourself with the precious few days of your life that you get to be here, how do you want to spend them and yeah. start to create your life in the shape of how, what's going to make you excited to wake up in the morning? What's going to build that empire around you that you're going to love so much, you know? I'm and that is, that is what I would say. We craft our outside by having that vision and then starting from here and doing those steps to get there along the way. I know a lot of people who want to teach at the beach or, or in a 
you know, a beach situation and they're slogging away in the city, spending all their time there and building that. But they talk about this other dream and I'm thinking, well, why don't you put all your time and energy towards more things like that? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's yeah. So Spoke to my soul right there. Yeah. Seriously. I, I lost uh, all track of what we're going to talk about next. After that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, just I don't even care anymore. But I, I just want to like, talk mm, about that. <laughs> t- tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> just keep going. <laughs> yeah. no, it's it's um, on point. Mention, I will mention a practical tool too, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. please. Yeah, um, please. I teach keep going. How to find their authenticity and how to, how to be a little bit more honed into their brand, which yeah. is their uniqueness and their fire. Right. Um, one of the best ways I found, because a lot of people are unclear between them and themselves, what that is. And you can, you can write more with yourself and always, always spend time with yourself in a journal and write about it. But ultimately it's also nice to ask, ask your people. I would say post on your social media. Can everybody who comes here and and studies with me and likes what I'm doing, tell me three words that describe me to you. So they're going to write three words about you that are why they like studying with you, why they come to your page. And you'll get a lot of repetition. And you can really look at what people are seeing in you, and it might surprise you. Now, whether you want to claim that or not, that's up to you. But I thought when I did this years ago, I got like 200 responses. I couldn't believe how many people wanted to tell me why they liked studying with me and doing stuff. And I thought I was going to get like creativity and I like your music. I love your, your cool sequencing, but I got authenticity, empowerment and fierceness. Wow. Yes. And I was like, Oh shit. That is, that's who I am. Mm-hmm. And I was kind of muddying the message by hitting this over here when actually I got goosebumps hearing that, but I had to hear it from them. Mm. Yeah. They're like, you're a lioness, you're a queen, you're like a leader, like a fierce female. I'm like, well, of course that's who I am. But I wasn't really, I was a little bit over here. So just clicked, clicked me in. And then Boom. everything I do now, you'll see it's, it's all, all that messaging. And that's coming from my soul. So it rings true. That's powerful. I love that. I want, I, I don't know if you've ever taught a class with just fire blaring in the background, just like <laughs> shooting. But I would totally fucking go to that class. I, when you were talking, I was just like fucking fire shooting out from behind and like doing sun salutations yeah. with just fire in the background. Can, can we like make a, this happen someday? <laughs> Please. Yeah. Like kiss in the 70s. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is anybody here want to do some sun salutations? Yeah. Whoosh, fire. Fire, like, fire. I'm there. I'm oh, there. Yeah. Hey, I'm, also, I'm also, also there. Also there. Also there. You know, you're a Photoshop video editor. I'll, I'll do it. Yeah. I was, <laughs> it's Photoshop so in point what you said. Yeah, it's so in point. Getting the feedback from your audience. And Pedro and I have talked about that. It's like yeah. we like the audience and even even for our pages, like on social media, and even for his students, like the end user, the audience, the student is like who like who we want to provide the value to it's the end user it's not like for what my agenda is it's that end user and sometimes like you just don't know what they want like you just don't know until you ask them like what do you want like what do you like like what can i bring a value to you what do you want more of the show or what do you want more of me as a teacher so yeah i love that getting the feedback from the they audience want to tell you. they want to tell you you know they they're they watch it from the outside and sometimes that's a really refreshing perspective um, I also ask that question and I, I get a lot of keep doing what you're doing or I love it. But, but then again, you'll see that it will provide you with too big of a spectrum as well. Um, every time I ask that question, I get, get like, um, <clears throat> oh, I want more of your, I want more of your music. I want more meditation. I want more restorative yoga, more core stuff, more yoga shred stuff. I love that. Uh, more motivations. And it's just like more of things, but then some people will say, I want therapeutic yoga for people with scoliosis. I want oh, cancer, yeah. you know, yoga for cancer, uh, people going through cancer and all sorts of stuff I would love to give. But ultimately within that spectrum, I have to decide the few things I can repeat and they know what they're there for. And then yeah. other teachers doing other things specifically, they can go. Um, 
So, you that. know, you don't always want to just, you're not saying this, but you don't want to always just respond to everybody's needs or you'll become diluted right. and you'll become nothing. You'll like be yeah. a meh. Right. It's right. yeah. My, yeah. my wife talks about that. My wife Summer talks about it all the time, like a jack of all trades, but a master of nothing, you know, master of none kind of thing, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. And like, that's like not what you want to want to be, you know? Yeah. Um, and just because you can do it doesn't mean you should plaster it all over your social media. Yeah. It's, it, it gets confusing and it looks like a garage sale. You know? <laughs> like, <laughs> junk to go through you guys are doing it really well and i love your page because it's very clear what i get from it is uh you've got the the, the irreverently reverent memes that are so on point <laughs> you've got you. your your practice and your and your family life too and how yep. they all kind of move together uh yeah. you know those two things really rise up in your channel, but you don't have 15 things that you're doing. Hmm, no, no. And ultimately to be clearly yourself, you have to decide two to four things that you're going to post about and do it regularly. And once in a while, there's an outlier. Yeah. Yeah. The wild it's, card. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, wild exa card. <laughs> yeah. Because that's your brand. I mean, and your brand is your reputation these days. I mean, yeah, because we have social media and wherever you're at, if you're trying to grow a business or brand or yoga teacher, whatever you're trying to do, like you have your reputation and your reputation's out there from with what you're posting. So yeah, if you're all over the place, it's tough for people to be like, okay, I, like, I relate to this or I don't relate to this, yeah. but it's like, it's pretty, once I got like for me, once I got clear with like what, like I, like my purpose is, it became very easy to like post and very easy to like know what I am and what I'm not, you know? And, and it was just asking those questions. I had to ask those questions to myself or just ask other people, like, give me feedback. Like, what do you like from it? What do you don't like from it? And focusing on those strengths. What's up, everyone? It's Pedro. I hope you're enjoying this episode with Sadie Nardini. Not only is she the coolest badass yogi on the planet, but she has the most amazing mohawk on the planet. And if you don't know about it, you need to check it out on YouTube. You can actually watch the show. Did you know that you could watch this on YouTube, the whole conversation? If you want to head over there and check it out, you can see Brian and I and Sadie right before your very eyes on your phone, or your computer, wherever you're at. I just wanted to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, Ajna Wellbeing, for being here with us on the show. As I've told you before, their amazing products has helped me so much on the acupressure pillow and the mat. And now I'm using their meditation cushion and I'm so grateful that I found their amazing line. They're offering an amazing discount to our listeners out there. 15% off your purchase at amazon.com slash Ajna, which is A-J-N-A. -A. Make sure to use promo code YOGISHOW15 for 50% off your purchase. Don't miss out on their products. Again, we're still in that new year, new me, treat yourself phase. They're incredible. Check them out and let's get back to the show. Well, that's really it. That's called clarity. And you can ask from the outside in, you can ask your community what they think and what they need, but ultimately you've got to be happy and excited and feeling like the artist that you are each day lit up. Uh, because yeah. you're doing what is really deep in your heart and soul, even if a hundred people unfollow you because of it, a thousand <laughs> yeah. people will follow you. Bye. <laughs> right? so, and you'll be happy and satisfied. And teachers come out of class all the time going, I didn't really feel like I, I don't feel like I did my best job. I don't know why. Because you were holding back a lot to, because you didn't like know if you should really speak your truth or be yourself and oh they probably don't want that today or oh you know oh J jane is here and jane doesn't like my music so i'm just gonna go for the krishna das when i don't like yeah. Krishna das. <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah, yeah. Um, whatever like temp tempering yourself and, and changing yourself like a chameleon to try to please everybody will okay. make damn sure that everyone comes to your stuff in your classes uh, because it's like a good time for them or they like to work out, but not because of your message and not because you're irreplaceable. You don't want to be interchangeable as a teacher. You want to be irreplaceable. Irreplaceable. Yes. Mm. I love that. You can only and, do it when you're giving something that nobody else can. And that is, that's right. got to come from you. Right. You got to share your unique gift that nobody else has. That's yeah. the only thing. Like, that's, there's something that everybody has. I talked about on the show before. Some, everybody has something that nobody else has.
So yeah. your job is to find what that is, figure it out, and you got to share it. Like you got to go out there and share. You got to share that shit with everybody. You know, that's like what yes. you got to do. That's your mission. You know, so take us back, Sadie. Take us back to like 2018. Mm-hmm. You deleted all your Instagram photos. They went <laughs> away. And you started over. And this, you know, what was the inspiration behind you? Was that like a starting over point? Like what, what, was, the, what was the shift with that? You know, when it came to Instagram, I never really paid that much attention to it. I just throw up, you know, like, here's a, here's a picture of me. I'm outside. You know, I would say, I'd say some stuff and I I tell them where my, where my course is. I post a picture of me and just anything that I had. And I, you know, I was, it was, it was a couple of years of me being single and not having someone to take my photo. And there wasn't the Bluetooth cool, like <laughs> tripod thing you can do with your phone now you can take pictures of yourself there probably was but i didn't i'm not tech savvy actually so i didn't know it um and i was just taking like the same angle and it was just all over the place and i sat with that instagram page i also met my husband who is a photographer and videographer and really looked at it from the outside and said look we can we can level this up and i think be more clear and more useful for people yeah we went down to the beach bar, we had a couple drinks and we sat with a Moleskine journal and, and wrote out the grid. Like, what would this look like? How can we improve the value? And I realized I don't, I don't like, for me as an artist, many ways I'm creative. I don't like just lumping the new thing right on top of the old thing. Cause then you scroll down and it just gets messy and it was annoying. Mm-hmm. And I thought, who cares? If I don't have my 500 or it was like 3000, actually, <laughs> 3, that's photos. a lot of deletes. No one's going through 3000 photos <laughs> and it's traumatized if they go away. I thought yeah. about the specific person. I would rather start over and ha- give it a new look and new value than try to continue in the old way, but kind of, but kind of in the new way. We yeah. wiped it. It was refreshing and exciting. I'm like, can you even do this? Is this a thing that you could do with a hundred thousand followers? Yeah. You just wipe it and start over. It was awesome. And um, no one so, cared. Everyone was actually very excited. Cool. And I add, I so add cool. more value. I'm going to change it again too, but I'm, I'm not going to wipe it. I'm going to keep. Is it going to be of you with pics with fire in the background? <laughs> when you're new on Instagram. Yeah, it's me photoshopped onto every <laughs> rock band from the 70s. <laughs> That's a new page. I hope you all like it. Can't wait. <laughs> I like in every post. New Already. splash. Sadie's just dropping that on the Yogi Show podcast that that's what's going down on her, on her page. Right Fire now. everywhere. You heard it here first. It'll be Black <laughs> Sabbath, but all my heads. All yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. And what's what's really great is that you know you've created. Were you the were you the first person to do like online yoga, like online brand? Was that were you like one of the first ones to do it? Yeah, if I wasn't the first, I was definitely one of them. Um, I remember looking at YouTube and there were only pictures of or videos of kids jumping off their mom's roofs. On yeah. <laughs> yeah. I watched all those. <laughs> you were probably one of the kids. I right? think so. <laughs> I, was trying to, I was trying to get in, like YouTube famous jumping into bushes. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you, you could again, probably. They like that again. Um, but I, but I was like, wait, let's type in yoga. I typed in yoga and I'm not kidding you. The only thing that came up were a couple videos of, I think I Yangar in the thirties oh. or Patabi Joyce or somebody in the thirties in the black and white, like mm-hmm. just throwing mm-hmm. their bodies around. Just like Gosh, rolling right? back and forth all around the place. Yeah. I was like, is this footage speeded up? No, it wasn't. That's the way they were like, sun salutation. It was crazy. <laughs> it done, you know? Yeah. And I was like, well, geez, I, well, I'm not getting anyone in class. I'm new to New York City. Nobody knows who I am. I have like five to eight students in class. I got some free time on my hands. What if I made some yoga videos and put them up here and then told people where I teach? And Sounds I did logical. not know how to do that. I had no camera. I did not know how to use a camera, nothing. And um, I went to, you know, wherever, Best Buy. And I walked in, I said, so... Um, I need to make some yoga videos. It's filming me on a mat about this big. I need to put that much space. <laughs> Can you tell me how to do that? And then how I put that into YouTube. Yeah. And the, and the guy walked me through. He didn't know what YouTube even was. He, I walked him through and we figured it out. 
That's so well, cool. I had this, you like, didn't know what YouTube was? Wow. Yeah, that's, wow. Was it the, was it the Geek yeah. Squad at Best Buy? Was it the Geek Squad? Do you remember it was that? One, that yeah, was... one of the sections where they knew all that stuff. I don't know. Yeah. I just walked to the camcorder section and I'm like, <laughs> not making porn. I'm, I need to show myself <laughs> yoga. Okay. Like, yeah, sure, lady. Sure. Yeah, sure. sure. You and your you mohawk. Right. Yeah. 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 I I learned everything. I messed up so bad. Yeah. So I went from that, like filming myself straight into the sun, looking like a shadow. By the time I was done for an hour of practice, I'm like, oh god, I have to do that again. To to upping that, and now the footage looks and sounds really good. But yeah, I was the first person that I knew of doing that, um, and then. I was the first person to go to some of these e-learning sites and ask them to put some mo movement video. It was all nice. writing stuff like daily own. That was, it still is my partner to this day. Mm -hmm. One of them. And they didn't really have any physical practice on there. It was all writing like Deepak mm -hmm. Chopra would like write a thing or somebody, but I said, Hey, what do you think about putting some yoga videos up? And now it's everywhere. Now yeah. that's how people are really liking to learn if they can't get to the yeah. studio. Um, yeah. Cause nobody has time for the studio nowadays. Like, well, yeah. I mean, it's just a, the, the, the world is so fast paced, you know? So like yeah. online yoga is, is huge and your platform is amazing. It looks very nice, super professional, high Thanks. quality. So yeah. I want people to feel, and you know, I get the question a lot. Well, do you really think people can study online? Is it safe? All this. And, and I said, well, I don't think it's as safe as being in person. However, since people are going to practice at home now anyway, they say 75% of people want to practice at home mm -hmm. and do practice at home. Now, um, if teachers like me who are very knowledgeable in spinal anatomy, biomechanics, physics, joint anatomy, if I don't step up there and teach some classes with better instruction, then all we're getting are some people who really don't know their stuff. And there's a lot of that. I just see it all over and I cringe even really popular online teachers are just like, they don't, they don't understand anatomy properly, which is common. We're not taught that often in our yoga teacher trainings, not enough and not in the way that you, you, you move a body through space. We, we learn yoga alignment, but that can be very different than human anatomy. Mm -hmm. And so I'm trying to bring those two together and show people where we kind of have to throw out some of that yoga alignment from our old masters that did not know anatomy yeah because some of the instruction that we carry here is erroneous and just because it's old doesn't mean it's better right you know I've heard but there yeah. are some things that are beautiful and wonderful and then bringing in the western knowledge and the, and the contemporary knowledge of how we move is pretty powerful and if not me then who you know right then we're just gonna get miss bendy gumby girl who's like i love yoga and she's just the like I just watch it. I'm like, your <laughs> sacrum is going to fly out of your body like a freaking Frisbee golf. <laughs> She's like, what's a sacrum? Yeah. <laughs> that was good, Brian. That was really good. 250,000 followers, right? I'm like, mm, great. <laughs> but it's okay because there are other teachers who know stuff and, you know, hopefully people will gravitate toward us. Sure. More. What, what do you, what do you think of? So obviously these courses are online expert in anatomy, been doing this for so long. Do you still travel? Do you still travel and teach or no? I do somewhat. Yeah. Last year was really busy after, after saying we weren't going to travel anymore. We got a lot of great opportunities. I traveled to Japan for one day's worth of teaching. One day, wow. one day, just one to go day? to Japan. Yeah. How cool wow. is that though? They brought me over. I had a day of training their teachers and I got to be in Japan for 10 days in Tokyo. So I'm like, oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Things like that. But this year I'm traveling very specifically for things I can drive to in California and a couple of things um, outside of here, but really focusing on the online creation and marketing really this year, just letting people know the great stuff I made is there instead of making a ton more. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it so easy though? Like think about, like, I think about that all the time. It's like, it's so easy just to like make more content yeah. than like go into the part where like, I have good content. I just need people to know about this good content. You know what I mean? And like putting energy into that, you know, build this brand awareness, you know, brand. Awareness. And it's the unsexy part, you know, and as, mm -hmm. as creatives, 
most of my team are musicians at heart and creatives and we're super excited about making the content. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I have, I have like 15 other ideas right now in my head waiting to be made. However, we have two major teacher trainings. We have a bunch of <laughs> cool courses and an online subscription channel with a, over 150 classes on it. I don't need to make more stuff right now. I just need to add value to my social media pages and through that value, let people know if they want to continue with me where stuff is. That's it. Yeah, right, but right. that's the part none of us like yeah. to do. Or, or add fire to your videos. <laughs> or or right? add fire. Uh, yeah. Just more fire. Lit. Fuego. Lit <laughs> AF. Fuego. <laughs> Lit, yeah. My, I'm going to be. Sadie, AF is going to be my new yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, Sadie's for sure going to be a meme soon. 100%. Oh, 100%, when this episode 100%, comes out, 100 Sadie is 100% memeing meme you. We're right. that fire in yeah. there. Don't worry, Sadie. We got you. Perfect. As long as there's fire, I don't care what it says. <laughs> <laughs> I'm crazy. Tell us about your new gig. Tell us about Sadie in the band. Tell us how, uh, you know, Sadie in the, tri the tribe band. I don't even Sadie in the band. tribe. Sadie and the tribe. How is it? Um, have you always wanted to be a singer? Or are you always like, you got the voice, you know? Oh, thanks. Um, I did. I did actually. I grew up in a rock and roll family. My mom was a singer and had a rock band the whole time I was growing up. And I just remember going to gigs with her because um, it was easier than getting a babysitter. And it was in the Midwest in the 70s. Like, nobody's probably going to kill me. So I would be in the band. <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> I don't know. I'd make my way into the bar. People would give me quarters. I'd play video games and yeah. stuff and watch the band. And it was just, and watch their rehearsals. And from early days, I always felt attracted to that. And I, I thought that I could do it. In high school, I was in a Guns N' Roses cover band. Um, I was a singer. You know, I try it here and there. I'd do things. Um, but then the yoga really took over. I thought, well, I'm sharing my voice. I was with the yoga journal conferences and I was being taken all over the world doing cool stuff and with a mic on, right? Kind of the same. And, oh, maybe I don't need to go into that. Well, I just started feeling really split. One side of me was really full and bright and the other side was just dead. Mm -hmm. And not like crying for help. And I, there was always this itchy feeling. And... But I was like, but this is so like anyone would love this. So why why are you bitching about it? You know what's the problem? Right. I sat in meditation one day, and I heard I said, "Tell me what to do to kind of unite myself." I do feel I do feel scattered um, and discordant, and I heard a voice right away say, "Sadie, you're a singer who isn't singing." Oh. Yeah. But I'm I'm rocking my voice, and it's not it's not quite the same. Yeah. Um, when you have a voice in you that's not being fully expressed, whether it is a singing voice or whatever, you know, however you need to express it, um, it can really make you feel dark and sick in one area of your soul. That's not great. I said, okay, well then give me an opportunity to sing and I'll do it. And I swear to you, I'm not even kidding. The next morning I got a call to come to Los Angeles and write songs and record songs. And it has turned into this entire about three or four year process of learning how to be a songwriter, learning how to be in the recording studio, finding my voice because it started out kind of electronic whispery bullshit. Well, it was okay. <laughs> it was okay. <laughs> but it wasn't the eighties rock with the, with the Mohawk vibe. It wasn't you know? who I truly am. Nah. And nowadays we're just starting to put out these singles one a month. We're on our third right now. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. It's on all the platforms, Sadie and the Tribe, if anyone wants to go and check oh, it out. Oh, they're going to go check it out. Yeah, checking yeah. it out. You better well, check it out, them, ladies and well, gentlemen. We tell them to check something out. They're going to check it yeah. out. Hey. There's something going on. That song's dope. That song's oh, dope. thanks. Yeah, that's the cover of, uh, that, was our, that was our first cover. Everything else so far is original now that's coming up. Cool. That's a, that's a cover of Frida from ABBA. Ah, it's okay. That song first, but it was, it was cool to make it a little heavier guitar sounding. Fun. Yeah. Fun. And my dad's know, favorite band is Abba. Just saying that, and I love oh, it. Oh yeah, they're amazing. <laughs> and strangely, now we we write with a co another couple of musicians that are from Sweden, and they have that same kind of melodic beauty 
and darkness a little bit that that is just this gorgeous interplay and it's it's pretty funny she knows she knows the the other not uh frida right but anyefa yeah so she's like oh yeah i know anyefa I, I sing with her a lot and i'm like oh, okay Full <laughs> <circle>. <laughs> We're going to play the Ronnie James Dio um, gala in at the Wiltern is our next gig at this huge theater Very in Los cool. Angeles that is like a sick gig for someone who is just coming out with their original music. And I, I can't tell you how fast and far that universe is rushing in to meet me. Yeah. Once I said, okay, it's scary. It means a lot to me. So now I'm freaked out, but <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to do it. I will step up to every opportunity. It, it has gone like lightning. I love that. So, you know, I know you said that, Brian, you said that earlier, or, or somebody was saying it, Pedro, maybe you. Maybe. When you line up, you get rushed by the universe. And oh, it. yeah. Yeah. When you're on your yeah. path, like it's just going to, the universe can inspire to help you. It's going to put it all in front of you. The only thing you have to do is just get out of your own way. That's the only thing you got to do. You yeah. Know? That's what I say. It's going yeah. down the stream. Yeah. Yeah. Flowing downstream, you know, yeah. like don't swim upstream, swim downstream. You know, absolutely. Yeah. This has been, this has been amazing. Like the transformation, like core strength, vinyasa, like all these things that you've done. Now you're singing in the band. Like how cool that you're able to, that you listen to that inner voice because so many people out there. And I know that that point that you made adds the most, so much value is they're saying, well, I have the gig. I have the money. I have the house. I have the wife. I have the dog. I have the kids, but there's something missing here. It's not all about all of that. It's about like, what is your soul saying? Like, I, we need to do this to to be more fulfilled and to serve more people, serve more purpose. That's where like awareness, meditation, that's yoga, being aware of that and then taking action. That's the next thing is because so many people, they'll consume it and they'll listen to it, but they're not going to do anything about it. But you're doing something about it. Yeah, I stopped procrastinating a long time ago because I realized that was just a convenient excuse to not be afraid and not risk failure, you know? And um, all I would say to leave you with, is that uh, a lot of people are like, well, what if I fail? Well, what if it doesn't work out? What if, what if I can't do it? What if it turns out? Well, you're a hundred percent guaranteed to fail if you don't try it. So the odds are better. Take a, make a move, take a step. And if you're scared, it doesn't mean it's the wrong way to go. It can, it can really mean you're on the right track because your deepest soul expression will terrify you. And then you start doing it and then it gets easier and easier yes. and you start to confidence is an outcome state of that. You can't feel confident before you do something that scares you. You have to do it and then you'll feel confident after. So don't worry about that. Just, uh, you know, as I would say in my language, rock who you are and, yeah. uh, let, and let the outcome become clear later. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Take okay. action and get going everybody out there listening if you want to do something and there's and you have excuses you know like i i do this too it's like oh, i'll do this but i need to have all the right equipment like i need to have this the best oh, camera right. or i need to have the best sound system to do a podcast or whatever it's like no just get some shit and, you know fucking use your headphones and start recording <laughs> <laughs> and now. then you'll figure it out because yeah. it's not all going to work out like how no. you think it's going to work out. Like oh. just no. record, Never. do something, teach a yoga yeah. class. And then you'll learn after that. Be like, Oh fuck. Like I need to learn anatomy better or I need to, you know, like I yeah. am. Yeah. yeah you can't exactly. Yeah. Exactly. My husband, my husband always said, uh, done is better than perfect. Yeah. And done well is even better than that. But done well doesn't come until you get some shit done. And then you, and then you improve upon it as you go. You tweak. But I'll tell you one thing. If your information is good and you're, and you're useful in adding value and helping people with something, even if it's laughing or feeling like they're not so weird because they think that stuff too, like in your meme, <laughs> if, if you add value and the info is good or useful, then it, that actually um, – takes the place of like the highest possible quality stuff. In fact, if you do it too high quality, you lose connection. People will lose connection and relationship with you because it'll look like a commercial. Or yeah, a movie. Yeah. <laughs> yep. right. And I that's why I don't have that. a creepy like voiceover happening in my video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Oh, it's so hard. Hang on. <sighs> you know. <laughs> 
I call over, I keep it. I mean, whatever. That's yes. how you yeah, like I so, bought a nice camera with a microphone and it's still in my take that shit back. Closet. Like I use my iPhone for most of the shit. Like just get it done. <laughs> Everybody yeah. out there, like use just, what seriously. is easiest for you at the time just to make some content or teach a class or whatever. Like, you know, if it's to your family, if you're yeah, teaching yoga in your living room to your family and that's your first class, do it. Just yeah, just begin. It. Begin and do it enough times. Yeah. I mean, I, it was so funny. And I guess this is going to parallel what you're saying. Um, but in the music, in the music world, I walk in and I'm starting a new, you know, I'm really confident. I can get up and teach in front of a hundred thousand people yoga. It's fine. I'm not even going to break a sweat. So like, all right, let's, you know, crack my neck, let's get going. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> fine, but not too hard. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, but get me into a recording studio you know, last year, even get me in there. And I'm like, wait, well, who am I? What should I sound like? Should I, should I mimic this no. singer? Should I do this? Uh, and everyone just said, just fucking sing. Just fucking sing. It's just fucking singing. And then people will be listening to your songs going, how should I sing a little bit more like Sadie? I like that sound. And when they hear me, that is my sound. Cause it's me singing through my vocal cords, but yeah. feeling it and meaning it. And just yeah. getting into it and the imperfect perfection of that is what's interesting. Not how technically perfect I can be so boring. Well, I'm an opera singer, you know, <laughs> uh, not singing like everybody else, yep. but really being myself. But it, you have to practice that and, and keep feeling like I didn't quite get there. I didn't quite get there. I don't know. I don't know. And ultimately it comes down to just surrendering and sinking back into yourself and going, fuck it. This is me. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And nice. when that happens, it's transcendent. And that's, that's where anybody can get, you know, in, in their way too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, that. I like that quote. Fuck it. This is me. Yeah. That's so good. It, it's, it's just so good. It's so good. It's true. It, it, I'm it, it's real. That's yeah. what, that's, that's what I'm taking it. away. That's what I'm taking away today. It's, it's a good Fuck take it. Away. This it's is me. That's mantra. <laughs> that's a good mantra. <laughs> Seriously. It is. seriously no seriously you know what i mean seriously so i think that's the perfect segue into the final segment of the show the lighten up round so Ooh. it's just a couple of lightning questions that uh, yogi brian he, he comes up with some crazy shit off the cuff so <laughs> god only knows what's going to come out of this guy's mouth but uh brian you want to kick it off you kick it off this time right let us let's hear one let's hear a lightning uh, round and question. these are totally random like i didn't totally even random. think of these at all like just what's popping into my head is a volcano uh, the next thing is popping into my head is lightning bolt. Okay. Who ha who out of a volcano or a lightning bolt is a better anatomy teacher for yoga? Like who has Ooh. a better anatomy? Um, definitely the volcano because working with physics and anatomy and the deep core myofascial meridian that we all should know about. <laughs> hey! You have, to hey. Build you have to build it from the ground up. If you don't oh. work from the ground up, like a lava flow of an erupting volcano, <laughs> then you are going to stress and strain all your joints. That's so good. I'm starting to slow clap. Yeah, yeah, I'm starting slow to slow clap, clap on that answer. <laughs> that was... That's so good. That, that, that was... was yeah, exactly that, that's going to be in a, a yoga anatomy <laughs> book in the future, yeah. I think. Yeah. I'm going to use that. I'm gonna write it. It was awesome. Sadie, if you couldn't wear black anymore, what would your next per Oh, she's shaking her head. What would your next <laughs> permanent color be? That is, I mean, how close to black could I get without it being black? Like dark gray? <laughs> you could choose color. dark gray. Give me a give me a bright one though. If you had to pick a bright yeah, color. Like a neon a color. color. Um, I'm going to go with hot pink, mm, like these headphones right here, people. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, like, you know, t-shirts from the, the East village for some punk band pink. Cool. I like yes. that answer. I, 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 I kind of thought of that. I kind of thought of that as you, that that would be the, like the polar opposite. Yeah. yeah Love it. All right, Brian. All right. Let me. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Who. I got to go Disney. I got to go Disney on this. Love Disney. All right. Pinocchio. Pinocchio mm -hmm. or Nemo. So from Finding Nemo, Nemo, Pinocchio or Nemo, who reaches enlightenment first? Pinocchio. I think the tip of his nose would reach enlightenment. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. You know what? Uh, 
No, the, the wait, is the fish the dumb one? No. That's that's, the, that's, that's Dory. Dory. Yeah. That's Dory. I, that's, can that's I Ellen. use her? Because she's already enlightened. She's already. Yeah, yeah, yeah doesn't right. have a memory. Always yeah. living in the present moment. Always present. Always happy, mostly. Always hopeful. Always open. That's uh that's pretty dang enlightened to me. And she's okay. she always says keep swimming. Yeah. Keep swimming. But, but let me say, I watched so I watched that movie. I don't watch a lot of movies, but I, I need to get back. But do you remember when Nemo was searching for, and I'm going to be horrible at the plot, but I think he was searching for uh, Australia or something. He wanted to go to mm. Sydney. And so the turtles were riding the current. Yeah. He had a really hard time getting there. And in the ocean, it was going so slow. He's like, I'll never get there. And then all of a sudden they were like, hey, bro, <laughs> come and ride the current with us. And he looks and there's that beautiful light beam mm -hmm. that got in it and it just... Yes. Look in there. That was an enlightened moment. Yeah. And I encourage everybody to watch that scene because that's what it looks like when you line up with yourself. That wow. is amazing. That is my favorite part of the movie because I can relate to the turtles. Yeah. I, I always say like, bro, I'd be like, come on, bro. Go yeah. with the flow, bro. Flow, look what and happens. then he just goes with the flow. Yeah. How cool. Yeah. Sadie, that was... This was a profound lighten up round. This is so much deeper than all the others. This is so good. I really mean it. Um, yeah, it's true. It's we're, so good. We're going to so do true. an episode, in a future episode in season two, Sadie, with just lighten up round the whole, for the whole hour. With Sadie. Just, with Sadie. <laughs> this might be a new thing. I love it. These uh, are great. So, these are great answers. Hey, that was really good. Really good. Okay, one more, Sadie. One more, Sadie. Sure. Who could hold Navasana longer? A Merlot? Or a Pinot Grigio. Fuck <laughs> the Merlot. <laughs> That's from Sideways. <laughs> um, what was the question? Because I was already thinking about Sideways and you said Merlot. I was like, fuck Merlot. I don't want it. What does it say? I don't want any fucking Merlot. <laughs> who could hold the Who could hold the Voss in a long okay. <laughs> Merlot or Pinot Grigio? <laughs> Uh, Pinot Grigio is Italian. Is Merlot Italian? I drink I Pinot Grigio. I teach core strength vinyasa yoga. I think it's so Pinot Grigio. I give home court advantage to the Pinot Grigio. Oh, oh there you Bring go. It. Bring on the Pinot Grigio. Italiana. That's, <laughs> uh, that's so good. Sadie, this has been so fun. Uh, so fun. Really added a lot of value to the listeners for sure. All of your insight on yoga, your journey, your story, and uh, your fun lighten up questions. I wish you all the best with your venture with Sadie and the tribe. You're going to kill, you're already killing it and it's only going to get bigger. Yes. That's it. And thanks to both of you for putting out what you put out into the world. We all thank you. We need it. And keep doing what you do as well. It's just, it's wonderful to watch. Oh, appreciate uh, it. It's just I mean, fucking yoga. It's just fucking singing. It's just right? fucking singing. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> just, it's just, it's all yoga, honey, but it's just yoga, honey. Yep, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, that's so good. All right, my friends, we're going to sign off on this episode of the Yogi Show podcast. Please check the yogishow.com for all the show notes where everything lives, where to find Sadie, where to hear her music and check out her amazing classes and her online platform. Sadie, thanks so much. Rahman. My friends, namaste. Namaste. Thank you so much for listening to The Yogi Show podcast. Visit theyogishow.com for all the show notes, discount codes. Ajna Wellbeing is our sponsor for the show today. And you can go to amazon.com forward slash Ajna and use the code yogishow15 for a 15% discount. See you there. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Gratitude, gratitude, gratitude.